How's it going, everybody? It's good to see you all. And this is our Chaos Community Weekly Call. And I'm going to share my screen, I think. All right. So today, please add your name. And if you happen to remember the last movie that you saw, don't, don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> TV shows are like movies anymore. They're like super long movies. So maybe just <laughs> maybe that. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the last movie that I saw. I remember the last time I went to a movie theater and that was anyone but you and it's a rom-com. And from the first scene, I was laughing through the entire movie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's always good for the soul when you laugh for two hours straight. <laughs> Yiga Dynasty, is that like the old, like, US, like, 1980s Dynasty? No, it's a new one on Netflix. It's okay. more recent. Okay, because there's a Dynasty TV show from... Oh, from, I didn't know that. Oh, it is. It's old and from a long, long time ago. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, a new one. All right, cool. <clears throat> uh, House of the Dragons, I've heard that's pretty good, Hamza. Oh, Furiosa. Yeah, I will be talking. Is it on? What's it on? Pardon? Do you know what it's on? Is it on, is it Netflix? Uh, Wait, I think it's on Amazon, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. House of the Dragons. I don't know if okay. I think it's HBO. I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah, HBO. Thank you, Winifred. Yeah. Well, Furiosa, you remembered something. Good job. Last year, House of Dragons yeah. was released at the same time as The Rings of Power. And so there was a big Amazon with Rings of Power versus HBO with House of Dragons. And this year they were able to tease it apart so that rings of power is going to be released on the day after my birthday so it's a birthday present from oh. amazon <laughs> <laughs> and sophia furiosa was okay for you i liked it That's okay yeah. maybe um are you like were the mad max movies like important to you when you were I've actually still not seen the original. Um, I really enjoyed Fury Road. And so like, I was only comparing it to that one and there it was like, not as good as Fury Road. So then okay. it's like- I have not seen Furiosa. Fury Road is great. I agree. Mm -hmm. That like, it just starts and doesn't stop until the end. <laughs> it's one of those movies. Okay. All right, well, I, I still will see Furiosa, but okay. All right, well, uh, good. These are good tips. Um, so I think the first thing that I'd like to say is that if you didn't know, uh, Ruth Ikega has been elected as the Chaos Board Co-Chair along with Don Foster. So congratulations to Ruth. We'll put this out on, on socials, but I'm just really happy to have Ruth as a uh, board co-chair with Don. So congratulations, Ruth. I wish you were here, but <laughs> it's really great. Uh, all right. I know. So it just, it was so happy to have, and I'm really bummed because um, Ruth, I've, I've still never met Ruth in person and she was yeah. in New York at the OSPO for good. And I didn't go and she was there. <laughs> so anyway, it's too bad. Um, all right. So congratulations, Ruth. Yeah, I know. I'd be so great to meet her in person. <laughs> Um, so do, uh, what do you all think about an August break? We, this is something we do typically in August for a couple of weeks. I know the to do group, I think is taking the entire month of August off in terms of meetings anyway. Um, the fifth through the 16th is just a two weeks. I'm starting on a Monday, I think. So what do y'all think about that? It's pretty normal for what we do. The question would just be the, the, the weeks, if those are okay. 
Yeah, I think I'm the, all in favor. <laughs> it's, the break is always nice. It's always welcome. We do it around August, and then obviously we do it again around the uh, New Year kind of time, December, January, and it's just I don't it sets us back or anything like that. You know what I mean? I think it's good for everybody. Interestingly, the schools here in Millard are starting the week of August 5th, so the summer is ending for us. Wait, when does it start? August 7th is the first day of school already. Okay. That's, that's soon. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, well, cool. Sounds like we're kind of good on that one. So I'll just let Elizabeth know to remove the meetings there. Um, let's see, I just wanted to give people an update on the ISO standards work. Um, there's a link here that you can follow. So just so people know, we're taking a look at um, uh, a, kind of putting a lot of the metric models through the ISO compliance process and working with the Linux Foundation's Joint Development Foundation to help us along that along that path because I think doing ISO standards can be a little complex. Um, the reasons that we're doing this is because a number of organizations have um, kind of suggested that it would be helpful for internal conversations if they're using chaos metrics or chaos metrics models if these were ISO standards to help kind of orient um, the conversation and support the conversation internally in the use of uh, chaos tools. So that's a big reason why we're doing this. So you can get to this document through the, the link here. I also put it in the metrics model um, Slack channel. And really what this is, is it's the metric model that Gary had put together, Gary from Verizon. And it's kind of trying to follow what I believe to be the ISO standard kind of headers. So using some of his text and then kind of getting it to work into the ISO format. Um, there are a bunch of terms and definitions that we're going to have to take a little bit of time and define these. And then really we think that we can just link out to these particular metrics. Um, in this model. So anyway, if you could, if you have an interest in being part of this, um, that would be great if you could give it a read and just see how it looks. I think really our next step is to get this over to folks at the JDF and kind of get some feedback from there. Um, so anyway, if you're interested, I thought I'd, I'd let you know uh, that this is happening and I'd love any help and support on this. There are a couple of people who are interested in doing this as well. Uh, Divya who has comments here. Um, but, you know, please feel free to, to help out. Any questions on that? It's going to be a slow process. I think getting anything approved uh, through ISO might take up to a year just because we have to go through this a process of getting it into the proper format and then also a proper uh, a process of kind of sharing it. Um, kind of sharing it with others through a, a tour that we that we talked about. So um, anyway, I appreciate the people who have given feedback so far. Um, all right. Uh, another thing that kind of came from that same day is we have the metrics development working group. All right. So a little background on this too is at the moment we have say, let's just say 90 metrics that we have published in the chaos project. And those 90 metrics um, are generally quite consistent, at least in terms of the template, but um, it does appear that some percentage, some small percentage of them are still based on older templates. All right, so that's kind of problem number one. Um, it, it, that's issue number one. Issue number two is that we're actually proposing a new templating format for all the metrics that is considerably more concise um, and just provides people kind of the question that's being answered by the metric and an overview of the metric with an optional drop down to provide more information. So it's just, it's a new templating format that we're proposing for the metrics. 
And the reason that we're proposing this is there has been some indication that our metrics can be long and a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> so the idea here is to just kind of provide them at a first glance in kind of a short compact form, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. And if people want to know more, they can certainly click and, and find out more, but the, the metric itself will be a much smaller um, template. All right, so the, so that's all been well and good. And, and we've talked about that template and we've circulated it and it's great and it seems to work just fine. Um, but we have to go through and change 90 metrics <laughs> to this new template, which by itself is no small task. And so in the metrics meeting that we had last week, um, Georg brought up the idea and it was very much appreciated by everybody else that we consider hiring somebody to put the metrics into this new template. And there were kind of a series of steps that we had proposed to get this done, you know, um, but nonetheless, <laughs> the idea is to actually hiring, hiring somebody to do the kind of the, the very, um, uh, labor intensive work of converting all of the 90 metrics to this new template. Um, our, I think our suspicion is, is that by hiring somebody to do this, we can get like 90% of, you know, 85, 90, whatever the percentage might be, percent of the work done through this contracting. And then the work that we have to do as a community would be <laughs> considerably less. And we could kind of just smooth out any rough edges that remained. Um, Garrick, did you want to, you're just about to leave the screen, but did you want to add anything to that conversation? I, I think the uh, summary is pretty good. I was just telling my dog to go back where I want him. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Training him to stay <laughs> in one place. Um, the, yeah. But one, so I, I have a friend who is, willing to do the work, but if you have someone in the chaos community that's willing to do the work, then I think that is even better. The idea behind hiring someone is that this is a very tedious manual task. And just like when you have a, a company, you hire someone to take care of the building so that the specialized workers or the, in our case, the community members can focus on what they're really good at. And things like <clears throat> mopping the floors or changing out light bulbs, you have someone else take care of that. Um, and you pay them to do that. So that's the idea here to allow us as a community to focus on what we are good at and where our creativity is more, more valuable. Yeah, we are changing out the light bulb, essentially changing out the <laughs> template so the content of them shouldn't change so much of the metrics. It's really just about getting them into a proper format. So, um, so does anybody have any questions or comments on that or like concerns? I think the idea was is that we would use, yes, I did see Neil Diamond had joined the meeting, by the way. <laughs> I couldn't, I was waiting to finish my thought before I was going to make a comment on that, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so does anybody have any uh, questions or comments or concerns about that? I think the intention is to to use money that would be in Open Collective, which we have currently. I want to say about eleven thousand dollars without bringing that up uh, to support this work. Um, and normally, we just have the finance team of Georg, <clears throat> myself, and Ray Paik approve expenses. And those are for things like t-shirts or um, sometimes like our social events are covered through those approvals. I figured this one was a little bit different just in terms of hiring a person with those funds or you know paying for somebody's time. So we just wanted to circulate this idea more broadly before it's just Georg, Ray, and myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of saying this is good to go. So we'll we'll keep this open for a little bit. And if anybody has any expressed concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to me or Georg or Ray or, or say I'm here. So it's, um, yeah. 
I have a question. Sorry, I can't raise my hand anymore because I'm officially booted out of the Zoom call again on my laptop. Go ahead, um, go ahead. So or do we have a precedent for other kinds of contracts that we've done before for any work like this? Because I know we have our like our full-time employees ostensibly from the from our broader grant, but I didn't know about individual contracts. No, not like I don't think we've ever paid somebody like through open collective. We may have. Do you, do you know of anything? It feels like it's more for like items. We've no. had the mentorship programs, and I think some of those were paid through Open Collective. Is that, does that ring a bell? I mean, yeah, I guess that, that could fit. I know we have done that in the past. This just is a little bit different because it's our own, like not really a project that would necessarily qualify for those, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm just kind of curious if this is going to open the door to a lot of other, like, why can't we just hire a contractor for X kind of questions? And I'm assuming we want to do this very sparingly and ideally only once for something like this. I know we've had a couple of template refreshes and I want to say, Matt, you and Kevin did a lot of them in the past. And I feel like that is just not it's scalable or sustainable. <laughs> Um, so I understand the need for it. I just would want to, how do we ensure that we don't have to do it again? Yeah, that's fair. Um, uh, yeah. I have a question. So how about, uh, in the past, what we have been doing is, uh, we are asking for the volunteers or newcomers as a first task to convert this. I feel this can be easily called in that way rather than spending money on that. I, I don't mind doing it, but, uh, We've, just an idea for that. We've, we've tried this already, Vinod, even here with some of these metrics and templates without much uptake. Okay. So I, the point's well taken. Um, and then coordinating that community, uh, this is what came up in the metrics meeting, is coordinating that amount of community work would be a, <laughs> a lot of work all by itself. And simply working with a single contractor might at least just move us forward quickly in in say two months to really um, get a lot of those onto the new template. And Sophia, yes, I do have the uh, the new template. Gary, do you have it handy? Can you track it down while I'm showing my screen? It would be in the mix. Maybe one more suggestion yeah, on that hiring side is like if any of the students who have worked on the documentation of the chaos, since they are very familiar with the project, we can reach out to them if they are available to do that task. It'll be because they have the familiarity, yes. they've worked it, and rather than training from scratch, they know the context. Yes, I have done a few. I think there will be some, um, I, point is well taken. Um, somebody familiar with what a metric is and the context around the metrics, I agree will be really important. Um, a lot of the content in the metrics with the new template doesn't change. So here, thanks Georg. So this is the new metric this is one that's in the new template. So here you can get the, the template here. By the way, I'm going to have balloons in my upper right hand corner apparently all day because it's my birthday. Um, so the the idea here is that this what I have highlighted here is that is really all anybody's going to see regarding the metric. That's it the name of the metric, the question that it's addressing, and an overview of what this metric is. And so the overview is gonna be a combination of what we currently have split out as <clears throat> um, description, I kind of forget, description and use case or something like that. We have kind of two categories at the top in the current metric. And so we're just gonna bring these together into one overview section. The want to know more is still gonna have data collection strategies, filters, visualizations. 
So it will still, all of those, that content will st still remain. It's just gonna be hidden by, if you click on want to know more, it will expand. See what I'm saying? So it'll be there, but it'll just be hidden on the first, on the first view. So none of that content will leave either. And then references will still be there and contributors will still be there. So does that help a little bit too, Vinod? Like in terms of understanding the entirety of the metrics, I think we're, we're okay. The biggest amount of work is gonna be the editorial work that is kind of bringing together the two top overview uh -huh overview and description or something, whatever they are. Yeah. So um, fastly working on this, I, I think uh, this has, uh, uh, when we were reviewing the metrics, we, this was mostly reviewed and updated in many of the templates. Yep. Even those that are not updated, the question and overview is still better because when we dive inside like data collection, the approaches, all those things gets really challenging. Uh, yeah. In terms of like challenging, in terms of like editing it, editing or even rethinking whether should we keep that metric or should we drop out that metric or change it or change it into a model or something along those lines. But first three sections are will for the time being will be as intact. Oh, that's what my assumption is. Working with many metrics. Yes, it, it, I agree. And so when we do the if we pay somebody to do this work, like I'll, it, we're not asking them to rethink the structure of the metric right. you know I mean? at all. We're really just asking them to template what is there into this new template. And you know those two top sections I'm talking about? Again, I can't quite remember what they're called in the current metrics. You know, it's description and use cases. Is that what it is I'm talking about? Objectives. Ob Object objectives and description. Description and objective. All right, and we're smushing those two together into this overview. Right. That's it. So the the biggest the biggest thing we would ask the person to do is take those two sections and think about how to edit them into a single more cohesive paragraph. That's it. So there will be some judgment made there. Okay. But the rest, like all this stuff, I don't know if you can see my screen, but all this stuff down here. Like no, none of that changes. Okay. You know what I mean? These don't change. Does that help? You're muted, so I'll take that as a yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Um, and Sophia, I, I do understand your point as well. I see you just unmuted. So if you wanted to add something else. Well, I guess that, that's a, sort of an interesting point of just sort of the skills required to do it. It seems like this would be more of a technical writer focus um, versus a technical focus. Yes. Um, and I was curious, like, I know there are a couple of projects around technical writing. Like, I'm curious how we would go about hiring someone. Um, and maybe this is a question for the board versus a general weekly call. So feel free to table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have not talked about that at all, just in terms of how to identify an individual who would mm -hmm. do on this work. It was mostly just uh, maybe like right up to that point is all that we've talked about so far. Gotcha. Okay. These are great comments. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. And this is the whole point. Ideas. Any other thoughts or questions or comments from people? All right, I think, you know, just one last thing. I think a big part of this is um, it is, it's a, it's a huge amount of work. It just takes a lot of time to get these templated. And we would just love to kind of get this done in relatively short order. That's all. And I think paying somebody to dedicate time to make these changes could actually get that done a lot faster than we could do it as a community. All right. Um, let's see. I don't 
uh, I'm going to move on. So it looks like there is a, oh, I remember this from last time. So the Grace Hopper uh, virtual workshop open source day, looking for some volunteers to participate. Georg, do you, are you part of that? I am, yes. Comment on that, uh, what it would entail. Yeah, if you can open the runoff show, it shows the outline that we have in mind for this day. And we start off by introducing chaos. We provide some context um, around what we do and why metrics are important and taking a look at open source projects. And then there's a break. And after the break, we want to dive into the software and provides hands on experience with our Augur and Grimo lab software. And then, well, the, the goal is to get patches into the project. Uh, we'll see how much we can actually accomplish. So that's the design of the event. And so we basically have a room for chaos. And that's a Slack channel, I think. So what would volunteering, if somebody volunteered, what would they be doing? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Just being there and being helpful. Let's, <laughs> we'll go that way. <laughs> I have a question, even though in theory I've already signed up, so maybe I should have known the answer to this. Um, but Garrick, you mentioned the goal is to get patches to the project. Um, then I'm curious in terms of the, the sessions that we've outlined at the beginning, um, I'm wondering if I should refocus it to something that's a little bit more aligned. Let's have that conversation with Elizabeth because I might be mistaken. Okay. I just kind of floated a topic that I thought would be interesting to this group and in line with Grace Hopper in general, but I think I'm happy to reframe and make it more functional if we're thinking about the overarching goal for chaos. So how about I'll table this here and then I'll poke Elizabeth on the back channel and maybe we can have a separate sync on what we want to do at Grace Hopper. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. The squashing DI bucks is also not targeted at creating contributions to our software projects. So we may have to rethink this. Okay. I was gonna look at this. I would guess that volunteers would help in these breakout rooms. If I had to take a guess, like it sounds like you, Georg would, or Sophia or Elizabeth would talk about the thing that you're trying to talk about for a little bit, and then there would be a breakout session associated with that talk. Is that right or no? The breakout rooms are for the software parts. During the first these, part of the event, there's no breakout. I see. So these are. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. What was the question? Kind of like should. Thanks. <laughs> I heard it. I was trying to figure out who it was. <laughs> uh, um, so should the should the talks? Oops be associated with contributions back. Is that right? Fuck. Okay. Good questions. Okay, I'll just tag Elizabeth. Okay. Um, great, thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna, I think, Georg, you probably put this on here. Is that right? The code of conduct? 
Yes, I did. The, I don't think uh, we have anyone else from the committee here. So I'm going to just float it again. We drafted procedures for making a code of conduct report and how the code of conduct committee responds to any incidences that are reported. Because right now we have a code of conduct for the chaos community, which is great as a statement for we want to be mindful about this. We have some high level guidance on um, the, what happens when a report is made. There are many questions open for the specifics on how we handle reports and luckily at least i'm not aware of any report that has been made in the chaos community to date so this is purely to prepare and to have a procedure down that is transparent and also gives anyone who wants to make a report the confidence that we will take it serious and we'll protect them and their identity and so take a look at these procedures. Um, we adopted them from another community that was more focused for, on in-person events. So if something reads like it doesn't fully apply to chaos, we'd love to know and fix that. And then, well, I don't know, but we are still figuring out some like templates that we will use on our end as a code of conduct team and I think in the fall approximately we would like to put these in place and until then just circulate them get feedback um do you have a sense of how far away you are as a group of um, getting these materials on the website not like logistically, but just like the content in them. The content is here. So these are the procedures that we would post on the website. And mm -hmm. then how it will be discoverable would be from the code of conduct itself. And we drafted a so that in the current code of conduct, there's an enforcement section. And that is where these procedures will be linked from. And so do you do you have a sense that these are basically ready to be linked at this point, content wise? Yes. Okay. So it really is just about kind of logistically getting them there onto the website in WordPress or any however we do it. Yes. And okay. circulating them with the community to make sure no one is surprised by them. Okay. And there's a chance to provide feedback before it goes live. Okay, that sounds good. All right, cool. Thank you. Uh, all right, not to put anybody on the spot, but are there other topics? I see Neil Diamond, you have unmuted. Um, well, I just, I don't know if this is hopeful, um, but I do think that Google Docs recently launched a feature to make it easier to put docs into Markdown. Um, Yes. So I don't know if that expedites the website component, but it could. Uh, I'm assuming things end up going into Markdown for most website files. So I'm not exactly sure how to do it. Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to point that out because I'm hoping that might save a step or the painful person process of trying to convert it manually, which no one should be doing ever now, hopefully. Um, so I just wanted to mention that and hopefully reduce pain or so we, oil. We have been doing this like when I was working on the matrix uh, in the past, we use the add-on to save it as a markdown and put it on the GitHub. So <laughs> rather than now having an add-on, it'll be just from the Google. Great, so one last step. <laughs> I don't see it yet. What do you have to do for it to show up? Um, I have I, not used it yet. I just like read it yeah. launch. Yep. <laughs> so it's not as helpful. Okay. It could be downloading to your machine. So maybe it's like if you go to your download file. Yeah. 
So what we used to do is like we write the metric, like develop the metric or anything in the uh, Google Doc, save it as a markdown and then create a PR in the GitHub for that same metric. Download. I know where you find it, it just doesn't show up on mine. It might be because it's rolled out incrementally and whatever tier or server mine is being served from, it's not there yet. G is before L, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not using the free Gmail. I'm, I'm currently on my work laptop, so it's a paid workspace, which might have different features. Okay. Well, I'm sure you can call upon one of us to do it for you. <laughs> it might also go to your drive, like not your machine drive, but like your Google drive, if you have, depending on your account. So that could also be part of the problem. Like I would see it landing in two, in two of those places. I can also test it on mine, but also again, whatever I do on my machine as a Google employee may or may not be like any other person's experience. So I, I try to not offer that because it's often unhelpful. <laughs> Very true. All right. Well, this is great. Um, thank you for the update, Georg, and, and thanks for the logistical help, Sophia. That's very nice. All right. Um, we're at the end. I have some reminders. Is there anything else that people would like to bring up uh, for the agenda today? All righty. Uh, just a reminder for those of you that might have an interest, there is the Open Forum Academy. They have a CFP. If you happen to be thinking you might be in Boston in mid-November, I would recommend it. So this is, I think this is taking place of a, another conference that has shut down. It's a fairly small submission. It's 400 words for an abstract. So I would recommend folks uh, submit. I think it's a good group of people, both academics and practitioners who attend. Uh, so I have submitted and I think Don is submitting something and just put this on a reminder because um, it's coming up soon, August 7th. The Linux Foundation Member Summit is also coming up uh, with a deadline the 30th. Just put that on. I'm sure there's other deadlines in here too, but these are the two I have. And then um, Alice has been helping out a lot with podcasts. Monday, we're recording a couple different podcasts. But if you have ideas, there, Alice just does a wonderful job helping set up those podcasts and then get them edited. So honestly, if you have an idea, it's not that it's pretty easy to get your idea implemented into a podcast is what I'm saying. Um, I think we have it, it pretty well worked out. And again, Alice has just been absolutely wonderful um, in helping with those, those podcasts from start to finish. So if you have an idea, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right. Sound good? All right. Um, thank you for the well wishes on the, the birthday. Uh, you guys see your, your comment there. I'll reach out to you in Slack. Uh, and best to everybody. Have a good rest of your Tuesday. All right. Matt, can I ask you a birthday question? Yes. Do you make your own? I know you like baking cookies, but do you make someone else make you a birthday cake or do you bake something? I'm going to bake my own. So I'm going to be making an olive oil cake tonight, which is, it's, um, it's not like it's, a lot of olive oil it's just you use olive oil in place of vegetable oil and it's uh got a lot of lemon in it so it's a fairly dense cake very lemony and you can put like a you know a, a white frosting on it or just a lemon glaze if you would like so <laughs> i'll be making my own <laughs> so it's almost like carrot cake consistency then uh it's not as as um moist as a carrot cake just carrot cakes have so much liquid in them from the carrots that yeah this is more like a it's more like a pound cake would be more the consistency mm -hmm. on this one so matt a question since i don't want to spoil you or anything but just a thought i got to know that uh, 
baking uh, or cooking oil, uh, olive oil burns it in terms of chemical properties. So I don't know, is it a good idea to use olive oil in it baking? Is, it is a good idea. So, so it'll, it'll be completely fine for the temperature that you bake the cake at. Okay. So it won't scald the oil. Um, and it's inside the cake, so it's not like on a on a it'll be fine. Okay. Yes. So uh yeah, oh great. If you have the ingredients, yeah, give it a try, Gary. It's not a complex cake at all, if you if you notice. So my one recommendation if anybody wants to bake is in this case you don't have to do it, but if you're using eggs or butter, always get them to room temperature. So set them out ahead of time. I know people can leave, but um, so set them out ahead of time, just so you have, this helps with the consistency when you're actually doing the blending. It's one thing a lot of people don't do, but. All right. I know what I'm getting out of the fridge after this call. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. It's good to Bye. see you. Bye. 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 Bye.